welcome to everyone in today's video class uh, we will have a discussion on the modern theory of rent the modern theory of rent can be studied by class by dividing in four parts the first one is say introduction part of the theory second one we have statement of the theory uh, third one that is uh, explanation and the last one is conclusion part okay like this we can study the modern theory of rent let's begin the discussion next uh, we have the introduction of the theory this theory is given by uh, professor alfred marshall uh, john robinson k e balding stigler and there are so many economists are there who have given their contribution towards this theory that is the reason we cannot call this theory with a particular economist name we call it is as a modern theory of rent that is modern economist theory of rent okay here here classical uh, economist thought that land as a factors of production was different from other factors of production they believed that land as a factor of production was different from other factors uh, we have already discussed in the david ricardo theory of rent he argued that the rent can be arises only to the land factor of land not to the other factors but modern economist modern economist thought that all the factors of production are same there is a no difference between the factors of production like land other factors also get the rewards in the form of rent okay we will discuss in our explanation part how the rent arises exactly here this theory is based on the concept of demand and supply in our economics we have the main fundamental concept that is demand and supply and the modern theory of rent is based on the these two concept demand and supply theory means what here here the demand for the land or say factors of production and the supply of the factors of production on the basis of these two concepts the modern economist have given their modern theory of rent next one next the statement of the theory according to this theory uh, rent is the difference between the actual earnings of a factor and its trans transfer earnings it means rent according to this modern economist rent is the difference between the actual earning and transfer earnings of a, of a factor okay here uh, transfer earning means what it is a minimum payment that has to be made for, made to the particular factor of production to retain it its present occupation or say present use that is called uh, transfer earning okay this is a minimum payment uh, which we have to pay for the use of uh, that product in present uh, say pro uh, production process okay that is called transfer earning actual earning is the sense uh, it is maximum uh, say earning Uh, if we deduct transfer earnings from actual earning we can get rent according to this modern economist this concept is applicable to all the factors of production next one uh, we have the explanation part of the theory here uh, according to uh, the modern theory uh, rent is a surplus which arises due to the difference between the actual earnings and transfer earnings a uh, modern a modern economist argued that this concept of rent is applicable to all the other factors of production whether it is a land labor capital or organization all the factors of production can get the rewards same as land in form of rent okay rent and uh, one more thing here the uh, the theory the modern theory of rent is based on the demand and supply concept of our economics okay uh, to explain this theory the modern economist have taken the demand and supply as a base okay base uh, that is the reason here we have to understood what is uh, the demand and supply concept here uh, to uh, to concerned with uh, factors of production uh, let us discuss 
uh, these two concept first after that uh, we will have uh, a discussion on the uh, modern theory of rent uh, with the help of a diagram next one um, say that is demand factors or say the demand theory how the demand theory applicable to the uh, say factors of production uh, for easy understanding here we only consider land as a factors of production and this concept applicable to all the other factors okay uh, the demand for land as for other factors is a dry demand it means uh, it means the demand has indirect the land has indirect demand not the direct demand how uh, if the demand for the products of land increases then only the demand for the use of land increase and vice versa here uh, for example say if a particular in in a particular land uh, we are uh, producing a rice okay rice if the demand for rice increases uh, then only the demand for land increase according to modern economist okay economist uh, when the uh, products of land increases uh, then automatically the demand for land also increase and uh, vice versa in the sense when the product the demand for the product of, product of land decreases accordingly uh, the demand of land also decreases okay decreases next uh, here we can see increase in demand of land leads to rise in the rent and vice versa it means when the demand for land increases along with the rent also increase there is a direct relationship between the increase in the demand and rise in the rent vice versa in the sense when the demand for land decreases automatically the rent also decreases here the demand for factor depends upon the its marginal uh, productivity uh, productivity say here also the, there is a direct demand uh, between the uh, demand for factor and its marginal productivity and the demand curve slopes downwards from left to right it means like this let us uh, draw a demand curve here on the vertical axis that is oy axis uh, we measure the rent and on the horizontal axis uh, we have the demand for land okay land here demand curve slopes downwards from left to right means like this this is the demand curve of land what it indicates it indicates that uh, with high rent people demand less and with less rent people demand more okay exactly the law of demand is applicable here okay next one uh, we have the supply of factors or say the supply theory here the supply of land is fixed so far as the whole community is concerned okay when we consider whole community as a one then the supply of land is fixed or say when we consider a particular nation that nation has the limited uh, supply of land or say the fixed supply of land land cannot be uh, the supply of land cannot be increase or decrease along, uh, according to the demand okay when we consider entire nation as a one then uh, the uh, supply of land is say uh, inelastic or fixed in nature okay for individual the land is in uh, elastic in nature elastic in the sense it, it can be increase or decrease according to the individual's demand okay individual's demand or say for the uh, particular purpose uh, land can be increased or decreased for example say uh, when the demand for rice increases okay increases we have to produce more and more rice okay for that purpose uh, we can utilize other land or say uh, the wheat production land into uh, rice production land we can convert that it means for uh, for say a particular purpose of production or intention and for individual uses the land has uh, elastic in nature or say land can be uh, increase or decrease according to the individual's demand that is the reason uh, we have two types in the supply of land one when uh, one is say first supply 
is inelastic supply of land and elastic supply of land okay by this uh, considering the supply of factors and demand factors now we can discuss the theory of modern theory of rent here uh, we have two diagrams one for say when the supply is inelastic in nature and when the supply is elastic in nature okay we will discuss how the rent determined in both these situations uh, next one now the diagrammatical explanation of the theory okay in this diagram uh, we can observe on the horizontal axis that is ox axis we measure the units of land the units of land includes the demand for land as well as the supply of land and on on the vertical axis that is y axis we measure the rent okay rent in this diagram in this diagram uh, we can observe uh, the ss curve the ss curve which is a vertical straight line uh, indicates that the fixed amount of uh, supply of land okay the fixed amount of supply of land it is uh, parallel to the oy axis okay in this diagram uh, we have three types of demand and we have three types of demand curves that is say uh, d1 d2 and d3 okay d1 d2 and d3 and another demand curve we have here that is d4 okay d4 let us uh, discuss how the rent determined under this situation here uh, when the demand is say d d1 okay when the demand is say d d1 and supply remains constant constant that is uh, say ss ss curve here the both demand and supply curve intersects at point q q1 okay q1 uh, this is called our equilibrium point okay this is called our equilibrium point at this point the total supply of land is say os os okay os and uh, at the point of equilibrium that is q1 the rent will be determined at point r1 or say or1 is our rent at the equilibrium point of q1 okay this is the one situation now uh, assume that uh, due to increase in the population or say the increase in the uh, demand of uh, products of uh, particular land then the demand for land also increase uh, assume that the demand curve shifts upward from say d d1 to d d2 this is our new demand curve okay this is our new uh, demand curve here the new point of intersection is say q2 okay q2 this is our equilibrium point now and therefore rent will be rise here at this point uh, rent will be rise to r2 from r1 to r2 this is the uh, say rent and the ss curve remains constant okay constant here we can observe when the demand for land increases automatically the rent also increase from r1 to r2 okay this is the one situation now suppose uh, due to uh, say a decrease in the demand for product of products of land uh, the demand for land also decreases okay decreases uh, say uh, from d d1 from d sorry from d1 to d3 okay from d1 to d3 the new point of intersection is now that is q3 why because in this point this is called equilibrium point at this point the supply curve as well as the demand curve intersects okay intersects that is point uh, that point is called equilibrium point okay now the rent also falls from r1 to r3 it means uh, the uh, given the supply curve when the demand increases rent also increase 
when the demand falls rent also falls okay now uh, assume that uh, uh, there is a entirely new country or new land and in that country there is a surplus land available freely for all the persons in that type of situation there will be no rent why because uh, this can be represented with the curve d4 we can see that here the demand for land is less than the supply of land okay that is the reason at this type of situation rent cannot be arises the this this concept have taken uh, from the david ricardian theory of rent okay next one uh, when the supply is elastic in nature when the supply is elastic in nature now in this diagram uh, we have the same conditions okay so conditions but here uh, we can observe os uh, sorry ss curve slopes upward from left to right direction what it indicates that it indicates it indicates when the demand for land increases accordingly demand supply also increasing okay increasing now this is for say individuals or say of a particular purpose demand is elastic okay demand is elastic here here uh, the d d1 is our uh, say earlier demand curve this demand curve intersects ss curve at point q1 at that point uh, say the demand for land and the supply of land is o m1 and the rent will be determined at point r1 okay r1 this is the one situation uh, suppose uh, the demand increases from d1 to d2 d1 to d2 the new point of intersection is now that is uh, say q2 q2 therefore at this point the rent will be r2 or determined at the point r2 at that point the demand for uh, demand for labor sorry land and the supply of land also increases from m1 to m2 this is the second condition and the third one and suppose that due to some other reasons okay reasons the demand decreases or demand for land falls to d3 d d3 at this uh, demand the new equilibrium point is now say that is q3 at that point the supply of land and the demand for land also decreases uh, from m uh, m1 to m3 and rent also falls from m r1 to r3 okay this is the uh, say method or way uh, we can determine the rent in the modern theory of rent okay rent is the uh, dependent factor which depends upon the supply of land and the demand for land according to modern economist okay modern economist next uh, we have that is conclusion part by analyzing or by discussing these two theories uh, we can conclude that uh, with compared to a recordian theory of rent the modern theory of rent has more realistic uh, say points or say it is more Uh, concern to reality ah there is no doubt the recordian theory has its importance but when we compare these two theory these two theory uh, the modern theory of rent is more realistic in nature okay this is the explanation of the modern theory of rent in our next video uh, we will discuss our remaining portion of syllabus thank you